Hi, let's take a look at an example of a completely inelastic collision that also allows us to review a little bit of using energy to solve for kinematics in an isolated system. And this is the physics of a ballistic pendulum. The way that a ballistic pendulum works is there's a target that's designed to absorb a projectile, usually something like a large block of wood suspended on a long string or possibly on a pole with a pivot and then some form of angle indicator that allows you to measure the deflection. So when that projectile collides with the pendulum mass and embeds itself, we undergo a completely inelastic collision and then that momentum from that projectile is transferred to the pendulum which is then going to start swinging back and forth. Well a pendulum basically works off trading kinetic energy for potential energy. So as that mass tries to move forward it's raised to a higher elevation lowering the potential energy until eventually that object stops. So if we can measure the either angle of deflection of our pendulum or the height that that pendulum rises, we have a way of figuring out how fast the pendulum's moving at the bottom and then by recording the mass of our pendulum initially and then the mass of the projectile, we could solve for the velocity of that projectile. So working backwards, we could either be given information on the height by having, say, a calibrated screen in the background and go through with a high-speed camera and look frame by frame and find out how high that object travels. We could also be given the length of the pendulum and have a way of measuring the angle. Because if we want to find this change in y from that piece, well, the length of the pendulum forms the hypotenuse of a right triangle. This side right here is adjacent to the angle, so that would be the length of the pendulum times the cosine of the angle that the pendulum makes when it comes to rest. So in terms of length, then, this change in height would be equal to the total length of the pendulum minus this adjacent component, the length times the cosine of theta. And one problem is this won't work if this object ends up just spinning around in a circle. Now, even if it just gets to the top and stops, it would be okay because it would have moved 180 degrees and the cosine of 180 degrees is negative one. So we get two times the length but normally we would be looking at angles often below 90 degrees. Well, here I'm going to say that I'm given that the pendulum rises a height of 10 centimeters from the base. Now, working backwards from step three to step two, we can serve energy. So when the pendulum is at the top, it has a potential energy and its kinetic energy is zero. And that potential energy will be equal to the total mass times the strength of gravity times the change in height of that pendulum. And the initial kinetic energy is based on the motion at the bottom, which would be one half times the total mass times the speed at the bottom squared. So when the kinetic energy goes to zero, that final potential energy equals the initial kinetic energy. And for this first piece, the masses don't matter. They cancel out. So that means the speed of the pendulum at its lowest point would be equal to multiply both sides by two and take the square root, the square root of two times the strength of gravity times our change in y. So if I take 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared times 0.1 meters, I get 1.44 meters squared per second squared, or sorry, 
1.96 meters squared per second squared, and the square root of 1.96 gives me 1.4 meters per second. Now, to figure out the speed of the projectile, we can conserve the momentum. So in any collision, whether it's elastic, inelastic, completely inelastic, momentum is always conserved. So if this larger mass starts at rest and has a mass of 500 grams and the projectile is moving and it has a mass of 2 grams, then the initial momentum is just the momentum of the projectile. And the momentum of the projectile is going to be its mass times its speed. A non-moving object has no momentum. After the collision, we have only one object, and its mass is the sum of the two masses times the speed that we just found of that object at the bottom of its swing. So that means then that the speed of the projectile is going to be the total mass divided by the mass of the projectile times the speed of the pendulum. So I have 502 grams divided by the 2 gram mass of the projectile times 1.4 meters per second. And 1.4 times 251 gives me 351 meters per second. Thanks for watching.